So again, thanks, uh, thanks for the invitation, Hugues. So it's very nice to be here. So I will also speak to uh, something else than uh, DNA damage, uh, which is sumo elation, and try to convince you that it plays an important role in uh, AML response to therapies. So we've heard already about AML. I will just make some few basic uh, reminders. So AML rise to the acquisition of oncogenic mutation or translocation by hematopoietic stem or progenitor cells, which instead of differentiating to the normal blood constituent, are first blocked in their differentiation and proliferate abnormally, disrupting the normal hematopoiesis. So AML is actually a group of uh, <coughs> an heterogeneous group of disease uh, characterized by uh, different uh, cytogenetic abnormalities. However, with the exception of uh, this acute promyelocytic leukemia, which are treated by the combination, which are cured by the combination of atra and arsenic trioxide, uh, due a lot to the work of uh, Hugues Dete, all the others leukemia are basically uh, treated with the same kind of regimen. So for patients who are fit enough, they receive this uh, intensive chemotherapy, so this three plus seven regimen comprising, as uh, Jean-Emmanuel said already, uh, by a combination of anthracycline, uh, such as donorubicin or idarubicin, and the nucleoside analog RSE. For unfit patients, and I will come back to that uh, in the end of the talk, uh, they generally receive DNA hypomethylating agents such as uh, azacitidine, and now uh, azacitidine is often used in combination with uh, the BCL2 inhibitor venetoclax. So although there are uh, recently approved new therapies, the prognosis uh, remains uh, pretty poor, especially in the elderly with a survival rate around 25% at five years. So this is in this context that we are trying to find a new therapeutic target, and we think that sumo elation is an interesting one. So just a, a brief introduction of sumo elation. So uh, it consists in the, uh, it's a post-translational modification, which consists in the conjugation of sumo proteins. So there are three main sumo isoforms, sumo 1, 2, and 3 which are conjugated to lysines of the target proteins via a conserved enzymatic cascade that comprises a sumo E1, a sumo E2, several E3s. So sumo elation is highly dynamic, protein being constantly sumo elated and desumo elated sense to the desumo elases of uh, the stem family in particular. So as most other post-translational modifications do, sumoylation changes the protein interaction surfaces, so it can either hide existing interaction surface or create new interaction surfaces. In particular, the creation of interaction surfaces is through the recruitment of protein that contains sumo-interacting motifs. So one of the first examples described for that was indeed in, still in uh, acute promyelocytic leukemia by the Dutes and uh, Ron Hayes group, showing that uh, arsenic trioxide leads to the polysumulation of the oncogenic PML rara, but also of uh, androgenous PML, which recruit this uh, seam-containing protein RNA4, which ubiquitizes the proteins and leads to its degradation. So actually, there are more than 6,000 sumoylated proteins known so far, and as such, sumoylation has been involved in the regulation of many cellular processes, but mostly nuclear processes. And this is in particular uh, important in DNA damage response, but in general, stress response and transcriptional regulation. And we are mostly interested in the regulation of transcription. So, Many uh, proteins involved in transcription are sumoylated, and these are transcription factors, transcription regulators, the polymerase, the histone themselves. But there is no real unifying uh, role of sumoylation in the regulation of transcription, since in some cases it can activate transcription, for example, by preventing the recruitment of repressor complex or favoring the recruitment of activator complex. But in other contexts, it can uh, do the opposite. It can recruit a repressive complex or prevent the recruitment of activator complex. So it's basically gene dependent and protein dependent. So we are interested, so I will present you here a first story where we were interested in the role of sumoylation in AML response to a uh, chemotherapeutic drug, in particular donorubicin. So as we heard, 
uh, anthracyclines are, uh, induce, uh, are inducing DNA damage, uh, primarily uh, by uh, being poisons of uh, topoisomerase 2, leading to this formation of this DNA protein crosslink. And actually, sumoylation was shown to play a role uh, in this process by uh, if Pomier steam. Uh, indeed, uh, uh, the DNA protein crosslink uh, involving TOPO2 induces its sumoylation, which again recruits this RNA4 and leads to this degradation, so helping to uh, resolve this DNA protein crosslink. But anthracyclines are uh, doing other things that DNA damage, and one of them is uh, the induction of the production of reactive oxygen species. And this has mostly been studied actually in cardiac cells because uh, it's thought that these ROS, they are responsible uh, of the cardiotoxicity of this anthracycline. But it's now clear that ROS are also second messenger in the activation of various signaling pathways through their ability to reversibly oxidize cysteines in proteins. And quite some years back now, we have shown that the SUMO pathway is one of these pathways which are regulated by ROS. And we have shown that the chemotherapeutic drug donorbicin, but also aracitin, lead to the production of ROS, and this leads to uh, the uh, formation of a reversible disulfide bond between the catalytic cysteine of the SUMO E2 and the SUMO E1. So this completely prevents the ability to activate and conjugate SUMO on the target proteins. So since the desumoylases are still active, this leads to a progressive desumoylation of cellular proteins that you can see here. So it starts quite fast, as you can see by the accumulation of the free SUMO already two hours after the beginning of the treatment of, so here it's uh, AML cell line treated with donorobicin. And then it becomes more massive when uh, the cells will enter into apoptosis. So we wondered if this desumoylation actually could play a role in the regulation of gene expression. And indeed, the first thing we did was to see if there was actually uh, changes in gene expression upon donorubicin or RSC treatment after a very short time, so three hours of treatment. More study being done with these drugs Checking, uh, we are checking the uh, effect on transcription much later. And actually what we found, so here again on uh, one IML cell line, is that donorubicin is much more efficient than RSC at regulating uh, gene expression. And the genes which are up or, uh, or down regulated are mostly involved in the regulation of proliferation and apoptosis, but also uh, in the regulation of inflammation. So we verified in uh, various models, including in uh, patient cells, that generally donorubicin is much more efficient than RSC at regulating uh, gene expression rapidly. So now, what about sumoylation? So the first thing we did was uh, to map where sumoylated proteins are bound on the chromatin using ChIP-seq. And so here you see uh, all the sumo peaks and uh, what we found and what other people found in other cell type. Actually, that sumoylated proteins are distributed all over the chromatin, but they are particularly enriched in promoters and enhancers. So if we now zoom in on promoter and enhancers, so sumoylated proteins uh, peak around 100 base pair before the transcription start sites and are enriched only on active promoter and not on inactive promoters and more or less the same for enhancers, we have a stronger enrichment on active enhancers compared to inactive enhancers. So now, what happens when we treat with uh, the drugs? So RSC doesn't really affect the presence of sumoylated protein, even it increases it a bit at promoters, no effect at enhancers. But donorubicin completely removes sumoylated proteins uh, from both positions. So thus, donorubicin induces a fast transcriptional reprogramming, and at the same time, it induces the removal of sumoylated proteins, or at least of sumo, uh, from the promoters and enhancers where it's highly enriched. So the question we had then, is this desumoylation that we are seeing responsible for the transcriptional reprogramming? So the first thing we did was uh, to induce the desumoylation only using an inhibitor of sumoylation, which is 
uh, ML792, so it's an inhibitor of the SUMO E1. And so you can see here, already one hour after treatment, we basically have no more sumo-related proteins. So it's very efficient inhibitors. It removes very rapidly sumo-related proteins compared to donorubicin, which has a much, uh, which takes much longer to induce this desumoylation. So then we performed RNA-seq experiment in this condition, but we found that very few genes are regulated by the inhibition of sumoylation at this early time point compared to uh, donorubicin. So this showed that actually the desumoylation induced by donorubicin is not sufficient to induce transcription. But still, we wondered if actually it could regulate the transcription induced by donorubicin. As uh, I said, donorubicin would <coughs> induce many signaling pathways uh, that could activate transcription. And in this context, uh, sumoylation could do something. So we combine uh, donorubicin with ML792 with the idea to accelerate and amplify uh, the uh, desumoylation. And here you see uh, the results of the RNA-seq experiment. What we found is that almost all the genes which are induced by donorubicin are less induced when we uh, inhibit sumoylation. And same for the genes downregulated, they are less downregulated. So it means that donorubicin induces a fast uh, transcriptional reprogramming. At the same time, it induces a desumoylation. But quite surprisingly, this desumoylation counteracts the effects of donorubicin on transcription. So the next thing we wanted to know is which could be these proteins that are rapidly desumoylated upon donorubicin treatment. So to identify them, we uh, performed mass spectrometry experiments after purifying all sumoylated proteins with uh, SUMO1 or SUMO2 antibodies. So what you can see here in the middle is that at this early time point, most proteins didn't change their sumoylation. A small group of proteins increased their sumoylation, and among them we find a TOP2B, which is in line with what I told you before, that uh, DNA protein crosslink induce the sumoylation of TOP2B. But the majority of proteins which changed their sumoylation lost their sumoylation, and this is uh, here in color. And if we look what are the proteins losing their sumoylation, they are mostly, if not exclusively, uh, involved in the regulation of transcription uh, gene expression in general. So one uh, protein uh, caught our attention, and this is uh, CTCF. So for those not uh, familiar with uh, chromatin architecture, uh, CTCF is an insulator protein which is involved in the formation of uh, these chromosome territories, these so-called topologically associated domains. So CTCF interacts with the cohesin to form chromatin loops and therefore can regulate transcription by bringing in proximity promoter and enhancers. So first we validated by immunoblotting the sumoylation of CTCF and you can see it here. So it appears at this slow migrating uh, form, so in AML cell line, but also in primary AML uh, cells. And you can see it disappears completely if we use the uh, SUMO inhibitors, but it also significantly decreases upon donorubicin or either rubicin treatment, but not uh, with RSC. So further linking CTCF and SUMO, if we, uh, we reanalyzed our ChIP-seq data for SUMO and found that the motif that is by far the most enriched at SUMO bound site is uh, the CTCF binding motif. So there is a, a good, very important co-localization between uh, sumo related proteins and CTCF on the chromatin. So to further confirm that, uh, we mapped uh, CTCF binding on the chromatin using uh, cut and run experiments. So uh, here you see all the uh, SUMO peaks on the chromatin, and here uh, the presence of CTCF at the same position. And you can see that a lot of the, the where we have the more SUMO, we also have CTCF. And this is particularly important uh, in this first cluster one here, which correspond to uh, promoters. 
and in the cluster 2 here, which corresponds uh, to enhancers. So then what happens when we treat uh, with donorubicin? So as here again, you see that SUMO is basically removed uh, from all the chromatin, but actually this doesn't really affect the binding of CTCF, and that neither <laughs> does uh, the inhibition of SUMO elation. So indeed what it says is that the d elation induced by donorubicin doesn't affect the binding of CTCF on the chromatin. But still, is it doing something? Is this d elation doing something at this position? So to address that, uh, we uh, studied in more detail one gene, which was, was actually one of the genes that we found the most induced uh, by donorubicin, and this is NF-kappa B2. So you can see here uh, its induction uh, by donorubicin, and again, inhibition of sumoylation strongly limits its upregulation. So NF-kappa B2 promoter is bound both by CTCF and SUMO, and uh, donorubicin removes SUMO from the promoters, and, but doesn't affect the binding of CTCF. So we could also show that NF-kappa B2 is also uh, induced by a chemotherapeutic treatment in vivo in patients. So we got uh, cells before and four hours after the beginning of the uh, chemotherapy and uh, checked for NF-kappa B2 expression, and we found an induction of the gene in all three patients. Moreover, and this is uh, in vitro, the treatment with the sumo elation inhibitor uh, strongly, uh, I mean, prevents the induction of the genes by uh, donorubicin. So we asked uh, if the donorubicin and sumo elation could control the architecture of the NF-kappa B2 locus. So NF-kappa B2 is at the center of a topologically associated domain that you see here. You can see here again the uh, CTCF and SUMO peak in its promoter. So to determine the architecture of the locus, we perform a chromatin conformation capture experiments, so 4C, and we found that the NF-kappa B2 promoter interacts with four distal regions uh, in gray here. So what happens when uh, we treat with donorubicin? Not much, actually. The global architecture of the locus is conserved. However, we lose an interaction here, and we gain a new interaction here in blue. And interestingly, this new interaction is with a region which is very high in H3K27 acetyl and H3K4 monometyl, which are mark of enhancer. But when we inhibit sumoylation at the same time, we prevent the formation of uh, this loop with the enhancer. So our model is that uh, CTCF and SUMO colocalize a lot on chromatin, in particular at promoters. And this is the case on the NF-kappa B2 gene, which is strongly activated by donorubicin. And donorubicin induced the formation of a new loop between the CTCF promoter and the distal enhancer. But at the same time, donorubicin induced a desumoylation which actually prevent the formation of this loop with the enhancer, which could explain why the d elation limits NF-kappa B2 induction by donorobicin. So now the second story I will tell you about uh, is more preclinical and concerns the targeting of sumoylation uh, in AML. So, we have now a first-in-class sumoylation inhibitor, TAG981, which is actually a derivative of the ML792 inhibitor I just told you about, that, is, uh, that has been developed by Takita Pharmaceutical, and it's in phase one, two clinical trials in uh, solid tumor and uh, lymphomas. So we were interested to see if it could be beneficial in uh, AML. So, from our previous work, the first thing uh, we did was actually to combine uh, TAG981 with the different uh, AMS therapies, and what you can see here are synergy matrices. So the more red it is, the more synergistic it is. And what you can appreciate is that TAG981 uh, synergizes with all three uh, main therapies, 
but the highest <coughs> synergy was seen with uh, azacitidine. I remind you, azacitidine is DNA hypomethylating agent given to patients who are unfit for uh, conventional chemotherapies. So we validated this in various models. So here on uh, 17 different uh, primary AML cells in vitro. So you can see that both azacitidine and TAC981 alone decrease the number of cells, but the maximal <coughs> effect is seen uh, with the combination. And this combination has uh, quite low toxicity on uh, normal uh, cells from uh, healthy donor uh, bone marrow mononucleated cells. So we also uh, performed various in vivo experiments with different cell lines. i just show you one here. Uh, so these are uh, THP1 cells injected in uh, NSG mice. So you can see here in gray uh, the uh, non-treated mice. Already TAG981 alone is quite efficient, more efficient than azacitidine at, prolong the, at prolonging their survival, but the maximal effect is seen with the combination of azacitidine and TAG981. And this is, uh, it's, it more than doubles their survival, which is very significant considering the aggressivity of this cell line in vivo. So as I told you in the introduction, now the, the um, treatment for patient unfit for uh, standard chemotherapy is azacitidine plus venetoclax. So, uh, we wondered if our regimen is better than AZA plus TAC, uh, than AZA plus VEN, and it is the case. You can see here the survival of the mice treated with AZA plus venetoclax, and here AZA plus TAC981, and uh, it's better, at least in this model. So we also <coughs> perform experiments in PDX. I show you two PDX here. So again, the monotherapies strongly decrease the tumor burden, but the maximal effect is uh, seen with the combination. And at least in the mice, we didn't see any toxicity of this regimen. So the next question obviously was again to try to understand how it works. So considering that azacitidine is a DNA hypomethylating agent, it's known to regulate transcription. As I told you, TAG981 is also uh, uh, regulating the sumoylation of uh, chromatin-bound proteins. So the first thing we did was uh, RNA-seq experiments. So contrarily to what I showed you in the first part on donorubicin, where we were interested in a very fast response here, it's much later because we uh, performed the experiment at three days because azacitidine needs to incorporate in the DNA during replication to uh, exert its effect. So similar to uh, ML792, actually inhibition of sumoylation alone is doing very uh, not much on uh, gene expression with only uh, 100 genes uh, upregulated. Azacitidine is much more efficient at regulating gene expression with uh, 1,600 genes upregulated, 200 down. But again, the maximal effect is seen with the combination with 3,000 genes upregulated and 800 downregulated. So in this case, and this is basically the opposite to what I showed you with donorubicin, in the case of azacitidine, inhibition of sumoylation enhances the effect of azacitidine on gene expression. So this can be uh, visualized here as well. So these are all the uh, pathways which are uh, enriched uh, in our RNA-seq. So these are gene set enrichment analysis. And you can see the enrichment score for azacitidine alone in gray and azacitidine plus TAG981 in red. And you can appreciate that in general, the enrichment score are higher with the AZA plus TAG compared to AZA, and same for the downregulated uh, pathways. So what are uh, these pathways? So in the enriched pathway, we find apoptosis. In the downregulated pathway, we find cell cycle progression. And we could show by different experiments, I don't have time to show you, that this combination indeed leads to a strong increase in apoptosis of the cells, a cell cycle rest, actually in particular in G2, and also a very strong differentiation of the leukemic cells. But in addition to this 
cell autonomous effect, we also found that a lot of, of the signature which are upregulated in the cells treated with azacitidine and tag 981 are related to uh, inflammation and immune response. So I will just give you two examples of this pathway. And one of them, uh, which is among the most enriched one, is the interferon type 1 uh, response. And you can see that it's, uh, the signature is enriched in the ASA plus tag versus MOC, but also ASA plus tag versus ASA. And here are just some examples of critical factors uh, involved in this pathway, the IRF uh, transcription factors, that uh, most of them are overexpressed in the ASA plus tag treated cells. And we could show in various models, and I just present you here in one PDX, that this treatment actually leads to a strong secretion of type 1 interferon by the leukemic cells themselves. A second signature uh, that uh, we found enriched is related to natural killer cells activation, again enriched in the ASA plus tag compared to MOC and ASA plus tag compared to ASA. And we could validate some of the genes that we found in this signature, in particular IKM1 and MyKMACB, by showing that their expression at the surface of the leukemic cells, so here on THP1 cells, but we had the same in PDX and on patient cells in vitro, their expression is induced by the ASA plus TAC combination. So altogether, this regimen leads to the secretion of type 1 interferon, but also other cytokines, uh, uh, such as um, CCL5, for example, CXCL10. And uh, the expression at the surface of the leukemic cells of uh, activators of natural killer cells. And so we could show in uh, co-culture experiments that actually this uh, leads to the activation of natural killer cells and enhance their cytotoxic activity towards the AML cells. So you can see here one uh, of the experimental setting. So uh, live uh, killing assay measured by Hincusite. You can see here the gray area correspond to the ability of the NK cells to treat, uh, to kill mock treated cells. And here the red area, uh, the ability of NK cells to kill cells that were treated with ASA plus TAC, and you can see that uh, the efficiency is higher here. So to summarize uh, this second part, we think that uh, the combination of uh, an inhibitor of sumoylation with the DNA hypomethylating agent is a promising strategy in AML. First, to induce differentiation cell cycle arrest and death of the leukemic cells, but also potentially to induce an anti-tumor immune response. So I will finish uh, with that, and I would like to thank, of course, the people who participated to this work uh, in the team. So uh, for the first part, mostly uh, it was the PhD work of Mathias Boulanger, a former PhD student in the team, and the second part on, of, on TAC 981, the PhD work of Ludovic Gabellier with the help of Marion de Toledo, Denis Tempe, and uh, other members in the team. And I thank our collaborators and funding agency and you for your attention.